Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics, back with another June Taylor project with the pre-printed batting, and this time it's a casserole caddy. Now, how many times have I been invited to a potluck and I had something warm and I wanted to keep it warm and not have it slipping around in my car as I'm driving to the party? This is such a practical, wonderful project to make, and it goes together quickly using the June Taylor pre-printed batting, and I'm gonna show you how that works today. I'm um, just gonna show you the casserole caddy. It has Velcro. I love that. So let's say I have a lid on my casserole. Of course, I would have either aluminum foil or a lid so that it's not making a mess on my fabric, um, keeping it warm. This allows it to be bigger if you have a lid on there or snug it up if it doesn't, if it's nice and compact. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Isn't this fantastic? And you know, also when uh, you're looking for maybe a housewarming gift, someone's moved into a new home, or maybe it's a couple that's just gotten married. Things like this make a wonderful gift. Now that's the Rosewood collection by Three Sisters from Moda Fabrics. I love this collection. It's got all the pretty florals, the paisley, the tone on tone, all the things that I love. Now this is also a great pre-cut project. You can use five inch squares and two and a half inch strips, plus a little bit of yardage and you have a project. So if you've got pre-cuts at home, or of course we have lots of those on our website, um, this is just a wonderful project to use with those pre-cuts. We have a kit available if you wanna do that in the rosewood. Of course, it might look beautiful in other fabrics too. So let me show you what the batting looks like when you open your package. You'll see the pre-printed batting here. And what I love about it is the numbers tell you what to do. Now, I've recorded some other videos on the June Taylor Quilt As You Go batting projects, and th this one starts just the same. So I'll quickly get you to the step where this one's actually a little bit different than the others. So I'm not uh, showing you the same thing I've already shown you in all those others. So let's just lay this out. It's a little bit big for the table that I'm on. But you can see the numbers here, starting with uh, number one, two, three, and four. So you would just lay out your fabrics where you want them to go. And that's always fun too, is the arrangement. And I do recommend you lay everything out before you sew it together, so that if you do wanna make changes, you do that before you start sewing. You're just gonna lay your squares out, and you're just gonna sew those together per the instructions that are included with the package of, of batting and then you'll be putting on your strips here. But that's where it actually starts to become different after that. Now let me get you to that stage real quickly. I'll bring out what we've done thus far. Now, and I've jumped ahead just a little bit because I'm always excited to show you guys. The first thing that you would want to do when you actually open up your package is you see how, is you see how you have a dash line and the solid lines. You have a lot of extra batting here. Go ahead and roughly trim around that, and you're going to want a backing fabric. We used a basting spray on the back side of that backing fabric. We just sprayed, and then we put the uh, batting on top of that. And then you start sewing the squares down. Let me show you what I mean. This is another fabric from that same collection. So we roughly cut around. We roughly cut around our shape. We went ahead and basted that with a basting spray to our backing fabric. But here's another important step. I got a little bit ahead of myself, and let me show you what the other important step is. Remove this. You will end up trimming what you've done in order to know how to trim on the front of this, you have the lines of the batting. You're going to sew along that. It's basically the footprint of the casual carrier in a contrasting thread. Don't, don't pick a coordinating thread because in the end, once we sew all of this to the batting, we're gonna come back and we will trim away the excess backing fabric and if you have a contrasting thread, it's gonna be hard to see where to cut, and you'll be cutting directly on that line. So, just to recap, once you cut out your batting, roughly cut around, you baste that with a basting spray to your backing fabric, you're going to go ahead and stitch around with a contrasting thread, and we'll, we'll pick it up later why that's important, and like I said, that's where you'll actually be cutting. 
so this is this has gotten you to the place we've gotten you to the place here like you've done any of the other June Taylors if you watch any of those videos and by the way if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel I encourage you to do that we're always coming out with new projects and a lot of times we do refer back to other projects so it's good to be part of our um, subscribe to that so you know when all of those videos come out and you can refer back we put our squares down and sewed them down per the instructions and we also put our two and a half inch strips. This is a very typical thing of the June Taylor batting projects, but with this casserole carrier, this is where it becomes different. On these two sections of the project, you pre-stitch your five inch squares together and you can see this grid here and you'll just line up, see those seams right there? I'm just gonna You'll literally flip that over and I'm going to line up that seam allowance with that dash line right there, there, and there and stitch. Now let's get some pins and let's get that going. I'll be using the Bernina 770 today and I'll be, I'll be engaging what's called the dual feed system and that's right here. I am using a presser foot. Anything with a D that has a nice open foot is great for you. The D is the dual feed. I want that to be bringing everything together and this is a wonderful feature of the Bernina. I love that. It's basically a walking foot. If you don't have a Bernina, no problem. Simply grab a walking foot um, and it's probably not necessary, but when you have more and more layers, I like to feed everything in together and that way you basically have feed dogs on the top and the bottom. make one more and then let's go ahead and take that and you'll see how beautifully that banana just plows through this fabric without any hesitation. And you'll be doing the same step of course over on this side where you're pre-assembling your four or five inch squares, quarter inch seam allowances, pressing your seams to the side up just a touch. That's where I want to be, right there. Okay, here we go. So let's have a look at that real quick. And I love these clover pins. They are just, they're patchwork pins. I used to think pins are pins are pins, whatever. Buy the cheapest pins. What's all the fuss? I learned what the fuss was. These are so sharp, the head is glass. So when I touch it with the iron, I'm not uh, melting that. Some of my other pins are plastic, and I didn't realize that. And they're super sharp. So it feels like when I pin things together, it doesn't disturb the fabric as much as some of my other pins, which are much larger in diameter. And when I put the, put the um, you know, pin shapes together, layers of fabric together, you definitely have this almost ruffle. It's definitely a disturbance. I love how it just kind of pierces the fabric and doesn't really disturb it. Now, as you'd expect, you're gonna press that to the outside. And with your additional strips, I'll just show that real fast. Naturally, that's going to go there. And yes, your strip is longer than that, but we're going to come back and trim that away. So I would just come here, sew that, come here, flip that, and I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. So when I come back, we'll be at the stage where we're ready to go and trim our project up and finish up our cash roll caddy. I've attached my four pieces of uh, the five inch squares and my strips. And so now my shape looks like this. This is where the contrasting thread comes in and it's so important. You wanna grab a nice pair of sharp scissors that can cut through all the layers of the fabric as well as that batting. I'm using the Clover Bordeaux scissors. These are one of the sharpest, uh, most comfortable scissors I've probably ever used. And I'm just gonna come in here at this point and start trimming away along those, these lines. And you can cut right on that line. You don't need to worry about cutting off to the side. And you'll literally just cut out your shape. Okay, so you can see this is literally coming into shape. And you will cut 
all the way around your shape and then you bind it. So that's how you get the casserole carrier to the point where it's a casserole carrier. And the final step is to just add the strap. So let me take you to this point. What we were just doing was cutting around that shape, as I mentioned. The pattern has you create bias binding because you are going around these curves right here, and that's the reason for the bias binding um, versus a width of fabric uh, strip for bind, uh, binding. You'll be going across the grain at 45 degrees to get that stretch you need right there in those kind of uh, shoulder areas. Once you have put binding on there, the last thing to do really is to apply a little bit of Velcro, and then I want to show you how they did their strap, which I thought was really clever. So I wanted to touch on that, and you'll be on your way with your casserole carrier in no time. And I have a feeling that when you bring that to a party, or maybe you have that in your home and you're using it, that your guests will ask about it, and they'll probably ask if you'll make one for them. And so be prepared to probably make more than one. Um, in fact, let me show you, let me show you this outside with the pan out. It's going to be easier for you to understand this if you can see the back side of this. I thought this was so clever how they basically just took some of those bias binding strips, sewed them together, and then inside here, it's a cotton, uh, it's kind of like cotton webbing. So I think it's one inches wide. This is available, very readily available. So we just made a shorter loop. This is obviously not the same distance as that. We just made a shorter loop, so it's a little easier to see on camera. But do you see how that's just continuous loop? And you've sandwiched this inside, and you secure that from here to here, and here to here, and it's good and sturdy. So let me move that to the side. I just want to show you how they created that. So let's turn that out. One of the first things they have you do is they have you turn an edge under by a half an inch and press. And in the past, I'm always like, well, how do, what's a half an inch? How do I guess that? Um, Clover came out with a hot press ruler. I love this because, of course, the rulers I have are normally plastic. I can't get heat near, near them. This was specifically made for that. So let's say that that edge wasn't pressed. I'm just going to bring my ruler up and when my fabric meets my line of a half inch, and you can see the lines, there's, all, there's quarter, half, three quarter, one, you, everything that you want in here. In fact, let me turn to that side where you can see the half. You simply bring your fabric up to that line. You just adjust your ruler, and then you come in with a good hot iron and you don't need to be shy. I use it on the linen setting, the hottest setting. I always use it on the hottest setting whenever I'm quilting or working with cotton fabric. You can heat this little iron or this little ruler up all day long and you cannot damage that. This is worth its weight in gold, especially if you're wanting to be precise, and I like to be precise. So that's how you're gonna get your half inch um, cuff up, and that's gonna be an important step. And then they have you bring in your webbing and place it just an eighth of an inch to the outside. This is a raw edge here. And then you simply take it to the sewing machine and you'll sew all the way around. Now when you come around your loop and you come back to meet that, as you get near it, before you are at that point, you will pause, project where that's going to be, cut that out of 45, and you can just butt those up to each other. You don't have to sew those together because the next step will actually secure that. Um, I am gonna sew this down so that I can show you the next step and take those pins out. So let's go ahead and take that to the sewing machine and sew that down. And again, I'm using my dual feed. It's wonderful how it just pulls this together. This would be another great one for a walking foot if you don't have a Bernina. And you're just gonna continue sewing this down. Now, just for time purposes, I'll stop there and I'll, I'll come back and show you what the next step is. All right. Then all you have to do is fold this around, fold this over. Isn't that so 
clever how they did that. I just, I just love how it's so secure. It kind of wraps so beautifully. And I use my Wonder Clips just to clip that. So of course, you'd be doing this all the way around and just clip it and you'll sew an eighth of an inch here, eighth of an inch there, and as directed in your pattern, you'll lay that out, making sure you don't have any twists, and you'll simply secure that to your casserole carrier and you'll finish up your casserole caddy. So this makes a great and practical gift to give, and of course, it's wonderful to use yourself. Be sure to pick up your casserole caddy kits available at Shabby Fabrics.